Well, welcome everybody back to Tulum Magazine. And uh, this is our episode where we talk to movers and shakers in the Tulum area. And today we have with us Evan Seinfeld. And I'm going to have him introduce himself and uh, we'll talk a little bit about what he's doing here. So Evan, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? How did you find yourself in Tulum? You know, um, it's interesting, you know, I, I, I'm a musician, an actor, I'm an artist, a creative person. Um, I toured the world with, uh, with my band Biohazard for the last 30 years and uh, was on a long break where I was just kind of reinventing myself, refiguring out what I wanted with my life um, in my early 50s. And I came to Tulum on a vacation with my third ex-wife um and there was magic here there was an energy force here that you know people who know me i'm not i'm not a hippie you know i'm not like i'm not overly woo woo right spiritual but i'm like spiritual rooted in like reality i'm i'm like real talk spirituality right uh, brooklyn style you know and <laughs> I felt something here. I feel like there's an energy here. I like me here. And what happened was I, after I left um, Tulum the first time, which was about three and a half years ago, I want to say it was 2018 or early 20. It was like, yeah, it was like my end of 2018, early 2019. And when I left here, I split up with my ex-wife and I began visiting Tulum with my friend ross with my son sammy every year i was coming for my birthday i started meeting people and making friends and running into people and having these what we call like these tulum meetings that they're not per chance meetings like if you right. run into a person three times in one day in tulum it's like obligatory you go invite them to lunch or a coffee and you sit down and you find out why the universe is connecting you guys and Tulum's not for everybody. I know plenty of people that came here with a idea of coming here, and it didn't agree. It didn't agree with them. Kind of spits people out sometimes. But yeah, um, I'm happy when I'm here. I'm smiling when I'm here. I feel something when I'm at the beach. When I'm at a cenote. When I feel the breeze where I am right here, right now, in a little private jungle. Um, and I moved here a year and three months ago. And uh, I was living in Los Angeles. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. Um, and uh, I was 20 years in L.A. and traveling a lot for work. You know, I'm an actor. I was on the HBO series Oz for many years. That was filmed in New York. A lot of my work was in L.A. I got involved in tech right. and built several platforms in the adult space that were extremely successful and uh, if you Google Evan Seinfeld, uh, the main my company was called Create Media. It is called Create Media. Um, I've since sold my adult platforms, but I built something called IsMyGirl.com and something called IsMyGuy.com, and these were like the leading competitors of OnlyFans. Oh, before the OnlyFans craze, right? And, uh, there are articles in Forbes and Business Insider and uh axios and i don't know cnn fox news uh vice rolling stone playboy everybody during the during the lockdown and the pandemic you know there were basically two pieces of news there was what's happening with covid and everybody lost their job and is now doing porn at home yeah. <laughs> and the second story seemed to get more clickbait than the first story. So my phone was ringing off the hook because I was in a successful business that I had bootstrapped. And right. from the up, my partners were uh, Inked Magazine, which is the world's biggest tattoo magazine. And I've been affiliated with them for like 20 plus years. And uh, my other partner is on the biggest webcam site in the world. It's called Streammate. And they have a lot of tech and I'm kind of like a dot connector. So whatever I'm doing, I get interested in building and creating things. And then I like to do something else. Right. And 
when I left that space, I really didn't know what I was going to do. I said, I'm, my son, who's just turned 28, who's an artist, he's, you can look him up on, uh, put, throw up a link, Sam Solomon. Okay. He's a rapper, singer, guitar player, producer. My son, who's now 28, but at the time was about 26, was like, you know, dad, I know that we're neighbors and we live close by here in LA and we hang out all the time. He goes, but every time you're in Tulum, you're just fucking happy. You're just grounded in yourself. And for me, I, I, I've lived, I feel like I've lived a thousand lives. I've lived lots of places and I spent a lot of time traveling, but I find connectivity here with like-minded people who also were just tired of the matrix and tired of living an old way. Yeah. I feel not to sound, it could sound corny. Um, there's always construction noise here in Tulum, always. And I love it because it's symbolic of the reconstruction that we do with our lives. Mm. People come here to like figure it out. People come here, they just got, they lost their job. They sold their company. They retired. They got divorced. They had a breakup. They just recovered. They're recovering from being sick. They a lot of people just don't know what to do with their lives. And they're realizing the world has more possibilities than sitting in your hometown and you know, just waiting for something to happen. Right. It's a great place to soul search. And I cut two. Here we are today in Tulum, 2023. I moved here to write a book. And my book is called Mentorship. And the idea of mentorship is that I had been through the life of a man again and again. I would get married. I would get divorced. I would build a company. I would company would go successful. A man would go under and go out of business. And I would lose all my money. And I would be broke. And then I would be rich. And then I would be broke. And then I'm, you know, I'm living in LA. And I'm invited to everything. And then I'm invited to nothing. And then right. <laughs> you know, we we start to. I think the biggest problem for myself and many of us in the world was def defining myself by the things that I had done or defining myself even worse by the stuff that I had mm. and rather than defining myself by who I am and what right. I love about Tulum is that you don't know who it's not important if you have money it's not important if you have a g-wagon here but when I lived in LA before I had a G wagon, I felt like, man, I got to get me a G wagon because otherwise, how are people going to think I'm like balling out here? How are people going to take me seriously in in business if I'm not right. projecting this image of success? And what I like about Tulum is that I walk around in a bathing suit, basically. All my fucking tattoos <laughs> out, and you know what? On Friday night, I put my big hat on to let people know I'm a local. So, Evan. You know, you've you've described so well what I sometimes have a, a hard time describing. So like why Tulum? You you really described it really well. Um, the, uh, the one of the ironies I found, you know, you described a lot of people coming here when you know things have fallen apart, when maybe they're coming to search for. Well, yeah, well, you know, know. It's yeah. A great you know what? If you had to figure it out somewhere, you want to figure it out on the beach or in fucking Minnesota, <laughs> freezing, freezing your your proverbial arse off. <laughs> what do you want to do? And you know, this was the this was the the word that I'm looking for, and I love words, and I learning Spanish, but in English, this this is this was the impetus. Yes. Of my new life's purpose. I found them. I came here goofing around. I'm going to come here. There's a lot of, you know, I was, I'm, you know, it's my midlife crisis. I'm 55 and I right. got myself in great shape. And I, I came to Tulum. There's lots of, I have great friends here. It's yeah. a healthy lifestyle because I'm vegetarian and I work out and I go to yoga and I go to the gym and, uh, and I, and I smoke, California weed. Right. 
uh, and I moved here. I was like, why wouldn't I want to live here? The beach is beautiful, beautiful women. I have friends here. <laughs> and I came here and I found everything I didn't have. I found my new life's purpose. I fell in love here. I have a girlfriend. I live in a beautiful place. Uh, and and as an expat here, it's pretty awesome. You know? Yeah. Uh, and what happened was... I got about 50 pages into writing my book and the, the idea of the book mentorship is that it is a guide that I wrote first for myself and then to share with other men in becoming honest with ourselves about the lives we really want. Not what sounds good to other people and not what you feel you're expected to say, but really everybody in your house wants you to be a cop, but you want to be a dancer, be right. a dancer. You know, if, you know, you feel that your family wants you to be a lawyer, but you want to be a yoga teacher. You can't compromise your life because it's the only life you have. My book talks a lot about time as our currency. I talk a lot about the beauty of impermanence and embracing the power of change. And <coughs> I came up with a step-by-step -step program to put my life in tune with my purpose and my passion, to live my best life, to right. figure it out, to not to continually be figuring it out, to fucking figure it out once and for all. How do you get on track? Right. And then obviously you have to keep recalibrating because you're changing, the world around you is changing, everybody you know is changing. The only thing constant is change. Embrace that. Oh, you have to move out of your house suddenly? Awesome. This is the best thing that ever happened to you. Your boss doesn't want you to work at his company anymore. Well, that clearly wasn't a good fit. So don't be attached to that idea or anything. I often like the 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 expats of the expats of Tulum as uh, as the uh, new children of Zion. Ah. you know, and I like the matrix. And, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But it's very funny. So. About 50 pages into my book, I've never written a book before. I've done a lot of things, and I do very strongly possess the power of self-belief, which is one of the chapters of my book, too. I believe that I can do anything. Because right. I've already, look, I'm not, a, I'm not, the, I'm not like a trained musician, and, and I don't have the greatest voice, but I sold 5 million albums in the 90s on, on the strength of hard work and sweat and and being authentic, right? Right. Uh, never had a song on the radio. It's a really interesting stat to be in the millions of anything without commercial, like in the underground, you know? That's amazing. So Biohazard was a big underground heavy metal band, but even getting just a record deal and getting out of the neighborhood, it made me believe everything was possible. Anything is possible. Right. And, uh, I was like a little nervous because the things I wasn't a little nervous. I was gripped in fear about my book. I was like, I wrote like 50 pages. Am I full of shit? Am I just regurgitating other things that I've heard? What are these ideas? Is this, am I on to something? I need like a fucking, like, a, I need to like a chin check reality check. And I invited all the guys that I knew right. here in Bloom. So it was like five guys from the gym two guys from yoga and, and and one guy from the beach and one guy from like a the DJ party. Right. And if I tell you that I said, okay, guys, I've gathered you here today to talk about the ideas in my book. And I want to get some feedback from you guys. And I don't want you to pull any punches and I don't want you to, um, if 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 it's bad, tell me it's bad. If it's good, if tell me what you like and what you don't like. Right. And what happened was everybody immediately related to almost everything I read and just started sharing their identifications and going, Holy shit, I can't believe you feel the same way as I feel about this thing. And I saw some magic because I'm, I was in AA for many, many years. 
And I always saw a really, really different type of honesty from men when they were in a container where there were only men. Right. Something happens to men when a woman walks into the room. It's it's not a cognitive thing. It's just, they men sit up a little taller or their voices get a little deeper. Or they, right. They, they want to project something. They're now thinking about how they're being seen versus just being. Right. And what happened was at the end of the meeting, I said, you guys want to come back next week and I'll read some more that I've written and we'll see like another topic. And we started setting topics and the format became, all right, today's topic is resentment. Bring up, and and the story in the book is resentment is the number one offender because it only offends you. Right. You resent me, Yoli. I don't even know you resent me. Probably I don't. I'm probably. And if it's warranted, I certainly don't care. Right. Because if I'm the kind of person that you, a sweet woman, resents, you feel some kind of way. I'm some narcissistic person who doesn't give a fuck in the first place. <laughs> so why are you going to give your free rent of your energy and your attention, you know, to me? So I would encourage the guys, everybody put out one resentment they got right now. doesn't matter how old it is, your big brother from when you were five or something your wife did yesterday or the, the, the dude at work or whoever it is, or it's me. Yeah. I was like, just call it out and let's give it up today. And let's just say I'm going to let this go. And if if you want next week, you can take it back. And you can carry it around in your backpack of boulders. Right. But we started talking about attachment. We started talking about confidence. And magically, every week the group started growing. Until last Wednesday, we had 41 guys here at my house. Wow. And we had to break up into separate groups. So what mentorship has evolved into organically with like Tulum using me as like a kind of a vessel. Yeah. Yoli, I was in the fucking porn business for 20 years. You know, when you Google me, a bunch of shit comes up because of how many people click on it. Right. You know, the important things I did in my life is that I'm a father and that I'm a friend and I'm a son and I'm a man and, uh, I'm a songwriter and I play music and I'm an actor and I had some very big success in, in the adult business because my second wife, who I fell in love with, was a porn star who was signed into a slavery contract. And I was forced out of like duty as a human being to intervene. And I brought my music entertainment lawyers to these schlocky porn people. Yeah. And and I cleaned house, and I got her her I I helped her get her life and her business straight, and it was there that I discovered I was good at business. So right. I just I just I always knew I had a knack for numbers and the art of a deal, but I didn't really envision myself making big business deals. I just wanted to be a musician, be a rock star, really, you know, right. and uh. So here we have now the circle of brotherhood. Every Wednesday in Tulum, men gather in person, share open-heartedly. There's tears. There's hugs. There's a safe container. And we're addressing the idea that 80% of all suicides are men. Yeah. Right, Because we don't talk about our problems. We just hold it in. We tough it out. We joke. We, we, we do everything that we learned how to do. That's toxic, you know? Yeah. And it comes out in addictions. It comes out in rage. It comes out in violence. It comes out in implosion and depression and anxiety. And, you know, and men always, like, historically, men, like, seem down on women. Women are always crying. They're so emotional. Yeah, you're supposed to be, dummy. If you're not emotional, if you're not rooted in your emotions... You commit suicide later. That's what happens, buddy. So keep holding it in if you want. I'm going to try to get in touch with my my emotions and my feelings, you know? Right. For me, the topic is emotional, and I feel so much, and I'm so in my emotions, Yoli. 
since I live in Tulum, I'm like this, you know. It's there's something this definitely something about this place, you know. Um, it does feel like this this stage we're at just as humanity. There's been a lot of um exploration of masculinity and what what that means and how it's defined. How are you guys, you know, within your group? It's incredible that you asked that question because the topic, none of the guys know yet because I don't give anybody the topic for the meeting until they get here. Right. Because I don't want anybody to think about it. I just want them to come from their heart. I, when the guys go, I don't know what to say. Go, don't think, just feel. Just yeah. open your mouth, start talking. Just talk. Talk about how you feel right now. Yeah. Uh, because we're so used to sharing from our ego. Mm. You know, I lived so much of my life, you know, in a completely ego-based life. And here I, you know, so along with along with the month, the weekly meetings, we have a weekly Zoom meeting for all the people that are not here. Okay. And we also let the guys Zoom in and listen in to the in-person Tulum meeting. And there's a lot of really really wise spiritual men woke minded what does it mean to be a man this is the topic today i'm gonna drop on them wow what, what it what is your stepping into 2023 what is your definition of masculinity for you that you want to project and what is one thing that you want to shed of your masculinity mm. like like a snake sheds his skin what do you want to step out of into, as you snake your body through it through the branch to 2023 and we're all transforming you know in some way so along with the meetings we also have a program mm. to follow to help put your life on a path to self-development and there's all this suggested routines Men love routines. Like my routine is morning meditation, affirmations, a gratitude practice. Then is some days is beach run and then always to the gym and then to yoga and then to food. And then I begin my work day and my creative day. But like I commit to taking care of myself above yeah. work above working even on my own things yes i want to i want to be the best me i don't want to i don't i've two times i had multi-million dollar companies that i built from scratch and my health deteriorating because i wasn't sleeping because i was so anxious and nervous and stressed and ended up having surgery and having to have a piece of my stomach removed from the 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 stress i guess i don't know they never really figured out why but yeah i feel like your mind and your body and your heart it's all one thing so uh what this is evolving into is i'm building a social network um gonna use a lot that i learned in the technology side of the adult business right because what i'm interested in Yoli, what I'm interested in is community. I'm interested in the way we interact. I'm interested in people. I love people. I really do. You know, I grew up in Brooklyn and Canarsie, and I lived in Flatbush. I lived in, and you know, I and I yeah. come from a time, you know, I'm 55. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have a computer. Right. A lot of people, a lot of people didn't have a phone. You know, if I wanted to go see Frankie. I would go walk over to Frankie's house. <laughs> hey, Frankie. And, would, and I would yell from downstairs because I, I was tired from walking over. And I knew his mother would come to the window because his mother was like a busybody. Hey, right. yo, Frankie. And, <laughs> and his mother would come, why are you yelling in the street like a bum? I said, I, can Frankie come down and be a bum with me in the street here too? <laughs> but I love people. And I, you know, I love technology and I love my phone and my computer, but it, it can take you away from people. It can take you away from yourself. So, you well, know, I, I'm, I'm on this great path. And my goal is to share this with men through an app called Mentorship and share my book. And here in Tulum, if you're checking out Tulum Magazine right now, uh, this is a great curation. Yes. 
Look up Mantorship. You can follow us on Instagram at Mantorship Official. You can follow me on Instagram at Evan Seinfeld if you want to see a guy having a great life. And full, you should, full, you full come, life. A full life. Great is just means happy. It's all it means. I can yes. tell you, I, I, I've had a lot more money in my life several times and never felt this good. You know, well, it's, it's not only the bottom line. It's really, it's here, you know. It sounds like you're definitely um, on that path. Um, and I have witnessed the mentorship group myself. And it is absolutely a growing community. And it's it's impressive. And it's also very timely, I think, Evan. I think this this is very timely with what's going on in, in, yeah, there's a in shift. our world. There's yeah. a shift. My, my, I mean, on a deeper note, like, what's my what's my goal here? You know, what's my goal with mentorship? Like, why am I writing the book? I'm 140 pages now. I'm close. I just want to hand it off to an editor. I'm looking for a book editor. If you know anybody, if you're watching this, I by the time you're watching this, I hope this book is out <laughs> and you can get it on Amazon. Yes. Uh, what I would like mentorship's impact on society mm. is that I want to create a safe container for men to be able to talk about their problems and their fears. It's really about fear. And huge. this is how toxic masculinity, you know, I grew up in fucking Brooklyn. So toxic. I can't even, I won't, I'm not going to tell a single story. All I can tell you is this is where it comes from. I was there and I'm very different today. And I surround myself with different type of people today. And you're, you can curate the life you want. You don't have to live a certain way and it's okay but what i want to do is my first milestone is i want to get a million men having a conversation in real time on on apps in groups of 10 having circles of brotherhood everywhere where they can tap in and check in not only just generally but to have topic groups you go and do a breakup here there's 37 live breakup groups right now are you feeling insecure about your physical, about your body? There's eight groups going on right now. Are you are you struggling with uh, feeling that you're man enough because you're uh, you're struggling with financial uncertainty? Oh, there's three thousand groups going on right now. I want to create a safe place for men to talk about their problems and hopefully help us all move away from toxic masculinity towards the new mindfulness, the new conscious man and redefine what it does mean to be a man, you know? Amazing. I have no doubt you're going to do it, Evan, because uh, I met a shaman who said, whatever you dream of here in Tulum, you got to be very careful because it's going to happen. You're going to manifest it. There's something yes, about. Sure. It's really interesting to say that because you got to be sure you want it then. Yes. A lot of people are afraid. They say they want something, and when it comes, they don't necessarily really want it. You know. Yeah, you're so you're so right. Embrace, but you know what? Me, I embrace it all, and if it doesn't feel right, you know, this is the moment to. <clears throat> I often call it a mentorship moment in the, in our meetings amongst the men. A guy will be like, you know. He'll he'll someone will say something and they'll realize they're stuck they'll realize and they'll have to when you say it in front of other guys it's like there's a code of honor of brotherhood of like accountability like mm. i'm gonna tell on myself right now because i don't want to come back next week and have to tell you i'm still crying about the same mm. you know my boss is this and I don't want to stay in this job. And, uh, and I'm like, this is the mentorship moment. This is the moment to take control of your life and say, is this the job I really want? No, quit your job and take all your time right now, right now and do something else. Dive in full speed, whether it's starting a company, looking for a new job, taking a break, 
but don't sit one extra minute in a situation that's not aligned with who you really are and what you want. Why am I preaching this like I understand it? I stayed about five years too long in a marriage. I stayed about 10 years too long in a business. Uh, I stayed in some one-sided friendships too long that were draining me like vampires. Mm. Mm. And hey, I work at being free of these things. And if you don't know what you want, it's okay. It's just important to know what you don't want. Mm, so true. Evan, there's going to be some people watching this, some men watching this who are like, you know, I want to, I want to go and experience Tulum or might be thinking, I actually want to move to Tulum. What would be your advice now that you've been, been here a while, you know, is there anything they can do to prepare any advice? You well, give? well, I, what I would just say is, um, and not not looking for a, a plug, but we're we're going to be offering mentorship retreats where men can come down and have like a week long experience where they get exposed to all the best things that we that Tulum has to offer. Uh, and that's if you're on the kind of wellness self development path. And you must know there's always beach and there's always party. Yeah. Uh, what I what I would tell anybody about if they think about moving to Tulum, I tell them it's like moving. It's it's spiritual and serene, but moving to Tulum is like moving to Vegas. There's a party every night, and you have to. And you gotta be like, you gotta have you gotta your head on. <laughs> yeah, take your fights carefully because I love you know everybody sees me on Instagram on my story in the DJ booth at three <laughs> in the morning. I'm a dragaloom, you know, or, and. Uh, and then they see me on the, you know, they see me at the gym at, you know, eight in the right. morning. Like, <laughs> you got I can't, I can't do it very often. You know, <laughs> if I want to live my healthy morning life, you know, going out, you know, I would just say, pick your poison. It's yeah. all here. Once in a while. Once in a while. <laughs> Make it special. Make it count. Thank you so much, Yoli. Thank you so much, Evan, for joining us on Tulu Magazine. 